So in this episode, we're going to talk about some quick tips, either things you probably already know and just need to go over briefly so that you're thinking about them on test day, or topics that just aren't so hard that we need a long episode to cover them fully. So let's just run through these quickly. We're going to talk about wordiness and redundancy, the construction noun, comma, pronoun, number agreement, the use of adjectives versus adverbs, double negatives, and everybody's favorite, split infinitives. Let's look at all these in detail next. So the first concept we're going to elaborate on is wordiness and redundancy. This is simple, but so, so important on the SAT writing section. In brief, you want to favor short, concise answers over long and repetitive ones. This will help you a lot. In particular, if you have two answer choices and you can't tell them apart in terms of which one's better, then looking for concise answers is a really good way to make the final judgment call. Let's look at a couple examples. If this were on the SAT, it wouldn't be a good answer choice. Let's look at why and see what a better version of it would look like. In order to reduce the rate of criminal activity, the building will constantly be monitored at all times. Okay, that is wordy and redundant. How can we do better? In order to reduce the rate of criminal activity, well, this should just be crime. <laughs> crime is criminal activity. The building will constantly be monitored at all times. Well, at all times is repetitious after we have constantly. And incidentally, we don't need in order to, we could also just say to, to reduce. So now on the SAT, you won't actually be doing these edits on your own, but you will be looking for answer choices that match this new version of the sentence a little more closely. Answer choices that are short, to the point. Let's try the second example. The award-winning typist's per minute typing speed reached up to 120 words per minute. This one's a pretty short sentence, but it's still repetitive and still longer than it should be. The award-winning typist per minute typing speed well, since we have per minute down here, we probably don't need the per minute typing speed. Reach up to 120 words per minute. The other thing we could cut is that since we know she's typing because she's a typist and she reached a number of words per minute, we could get rid of the word typing. The award-winning typist speed reached up to 120 words per minute. So this one's not quite as bad as the first example, but still keep in mind that we want short and concise sentences. Wordiness and redundancy is a big no-no on the SAT. Next up, noun comma pronoun. Do not be repetitive by summarizing your noun, which is often your subject of your sentence, with an unnecessary pronoun. Now that's a little abstract, let me be clear about what I mean. You don't want sentences that have constructions like, my cousin, he, or the modernist artist, they, because you already told us what you're talking about, so why would you go and summarize it right there? Same thing here. So let's look at, see what that would look like in a sentence on the SAT. Michael eagerly told his friends that his crazy neighbor, she has 32 cats. Very simply, we already know we're talking about the crazy neighbor, so we don't want to repeat that noun with the pronoun she. Not good on the SAT. Next, number agreement. Number agreement is the idea that we want to use singular nouns and plural nouns appropriately. It's a little vague, so let's look at some examples and you'll see what I mean. First up, all my friends hope to become an actor. I hope you can tell that's wrong. All of my